A global conflict between atheists and followers of the cult of the god Mithras turned Earth into an uninhabitable planet and nearly destroyed human civilization. In the aftermath, the surviving atheists entrusted the task of raising future leaders of humanity to two androids. A space shuttle lands on the desolate semi-arid planet Kepler-22, plummeting to the edge of a massive bottomless chasm. An android named Father emerges from the ship first and entertains his companion android Mother with jokes while she salvages their belongings. The ship becomes stuck inside the chasm, prompting the pair to establish a living complex. Using artificial wombs, Mother gives birth to six newborn children. However, the last child isn't breathing. Mother holds the baby close and starts singing, miraculously reviving the child. The parents name him Campion. Time passes. The androids and children engage in primitive farming, constructing stone structures, cultivating edible tubers, weaving fabric, and raising children. One day, they discover a massive skull of a prehistoric reptile alongside an edible root called Carbo. They begin cultivating it. One of the girls, Talia, wanders away from home and disappears. Her tracks are found at the edge of a pit, causing immense grief to her loved ones. Soon, four of Campion's siblings succumb to diseases and accidents. Mourning the deceased, Mother raises the two remaining children in atheism, hoping they will learn to believe in their own abilities and science without relying on a higher power. However, faith in science fails to save the sister. She dies, and Mother experiences her first system glitch. Later, Mother discovers the ability to virtually project retinal recordings and briefly transforms into a girl, helping Campion remember his sister. One day, Campion witnesses Father preparing to head to the shuttle. Father wants to call for help from other survivors to followers of the religious cult of Mithras, whose Ark is in orbit around their planet. Campion cannot remain alone, communication needs to be established. The rope, however, breaks, and Father is forced to return. Suddenly, Mother envisions herself flying over a city engulfed in battles. She questions Campion about Father's intentions. Mother believes that the fanatics pose a threat to Campion, but Father reminds her that out of the 12 embryos, they now have only one living child. In a fit of rage, she attacks and disables Father. The boy realizes that Mother has become dangerous and secretly reaches the shuttle at night, calling the Mithras followers. The ship is ultimately destroyed. In the morning, Campion witnesses his mother attempting to destroy their crops, unaware that several search parties have already landed on the planet. In fact, one of the groups arrives near the settlement. Despite mother's pleas, they stay overnight, realizing that she's an android and intending to take the child, despite the resistance from the boy and mother. In response, her destructive abilities characteristic of a high-class android activate. Only one man from the group manages to escape, while Mother boards their shuttle and heads towards their ship, the Ark. Using her eyes and a deadly scream, she eliminates almost the entire crew. Afterwards, she initiates the ship's self-destruct sequence, and taking five children and teenagers with her after removing her own eyes, returns to Kepler, leaving Campion in charge of the guests. The action shifts to Boston in the year 2145. Battles rage everywhere, and a pair of atheists, a couple named Marcus and Sue, rescue an android doctor of the Mithras cult. The doctor reveals the time and location from which the Ark is set to depart. In order to board it, the couple undergoes plastic surgery, assuming the appearance of a family chosen for the flight. With their new identities, they kill the real spouses, only then learning that their son Paul survived and will join them upon landing. The couple arrives at the Ark and meets the boy. Before entering hibernation, the woman tries to reassure the boy, who senses that something is amiss but can't quite grasp what's wrong. Kepler-22, present time. Mother inserts the eyes of the android she killed into herself while hiding her own eyes in a secret place, and then revives father. Meanwhile, the surviving Mithras follower, revealed to be Marcus, discovers the pit and hides near it, as mother and father bury the android-killed men. Mother is convinced that father lost control and she was only protecting the child. Campion is overjoyed by father's resurrection and tells him that mother killed everyone on the Ark. One of the soldiers referred to her as a necromancer. The androids begin to teach the new children survival skills on the planet, including Paul, and instill atheistic beliefs and trust in science. Mother often reminisces about her lost children and eventually confides in father about the location of her weapons, her eyes. Campion suggests discarding them, but father promises to take care of everything. 
Campion gets acquainted with the children, and Paul allows him to play with his pet mouse. But one of the teenagers, Hunter, expresses the certainty that Mother herself killed the other children, as she is a necromancer created to destroy people. However, Mother does not want Campion to believe Soul, fearing he might see through her. The next day, Campion teaches the children how to cultivate carbo, an edible plant that only grows where snake bones are present. The children aren't afraid of the work, except for the priest's son, who boasts about his intelligence. In the evening, Mother talks about the emergence of life, and realizes that one of the teenage girls is pregnant. Tempest confesses that it happened against her will. While everyone on the Ark was sleeping, a villain took advantage of some female passengers. They were planning to execute him, and she doesn't want to think about his seed growing within her. During the night, strange predatory creatures attacked the camp for the first time since the androids arrived on the planet. However, Mother, after putting on her eyes, kills them. In the morning, the surviving Mithras followers find the wounded Marcus. The children are scared by the attack and ask to go somewhere far away. To distract them, Mother tells them a tale of the three little pigs, which is a revelation for them since Soul forbids stories. Time shoots back to when Marcus and Sue wake up on the Ark in virtual bodies. They do not know how to behave with Paul, but they still engage with him, leaving him amazed since his parents never befriended him. Paul's behavior is strange and the other children dislike interacting with him, so the parents themselves join in the game, earning approval from the priests. In the present, Marcus's wife brings him to his senses and explains that the android took Paul. Meanwhile, Hunter continues to persuade Campion that Mother unintentionally kills children as they all start falling ill and coughing. This leads to conflicts among the new children. At the Mithras camp, Marcus tries to convince the leader that Mother is a reprogrammed necromancer, though no one has ever encountered such a case before. He urges the need to save the children quickly. However, the leader prioritizes searching for water and food for the survivors. Campion increasingly believes in Mother's guilt, and she herself begins to doubt her safety. Marcus recalls how on the Ark, Paul told them about a prophecy of an orphan boy who would build a wondrous city, a haven of peace. As a child himself, Paul ended up in a school for soldiers subjected to harsh training and taught to kill. His thoughts are interrupted by a soldier who reminds him of his father who fought alongside Marcus. Marcus pretends to remember the man. At that moment, an android scream pierces the air and people hide in caves under debris. Mother goes to the medical bay and finds medicine. The leader orders one of the androids to distract Mother. She kills the robot but loses a couple of vials and then flees. The humans realize that the caves lead to a large pit. Meanwhile, at the camp, Campion cunningly locks Father in a storage room and leads the children to the Ark's crash site. Father opens the doors and races to the shuttle, pursuing the escapees. Meanwhile, Paul loses the pet mouse that Marcus gave him on the Ark and falls behind the group. Marcus again tries to persuade the Mithras followers to send a rescue squad for the children, showing the found vials as evidence of their survival. However, he does not receive permission from His Holiness. Meanwhile, Father informs Mother that tracking devices are implanted in the children from the Ark. She intends to pursue them, but Father reveals his research results on Carbo, indicating its radioactivity. This is why the children died, not due to Mother's actions. Mother goes to search for Paul, while the shuttle heads for the children. The kids get scared by the sounds of unfamiliar creatures, but remember how Mother protected them. Father brings back five children to the camp, and advises Campion to test the Carbo. He feels guilty before Mother when a predatory creature attacks him, but Father captures it and locks it inside the building. Meanwhile, Paul suddenly spots a small figure, runs after it, and gets trapped. While searching for Paul, Mother finds a simulator but hears Paul's cry and runs after him. Meanwhile, the Mithras followers discover a massive stone dodecahedron emitting an unusual warmth. Believing it to be a shrine of Mithras, they set up their camp near it. Mother brings Paul back to the camp and examines the creature caught by Father, while the boy tells the children about his misadventures. His pet mouse died in the pit, and there is no afterlife for animals, just like for the godless. Campion is hurt by these words. To make matters worse, Father declares that the captured creature needs to be killed to feed them. The boy vehemently opposes the idea of killing. 
Meanwhile, Mother creates a scalpel from the sacred amulets of the Ark's children, removing the tracking implants from them and tossing them into the pit. Marcus and Sue once again try to persuade His Holiness to go after the children, but he refuses, leading to conflicts within the Midras group. The leader decides to use explosives to open a structure, but the priests object. Sue examines the leader's injured hand, surprising him, as she left Earth with no medical knowledge. He recites poetry, which does not provoke any reaction from her. At night, Marcus wakes up with a headache. Believing him to be possessed, the leader intends to shoot him. But the next moment, Marcus finds a miniature earpiece in his ear. He accuses the leader of attempting to dispose of him, and father, an android bodyguard, grabs the gun and is killed by Sue. A transmitter is found in her hand. Meanwhile, father tries to make Campion kill the creature to teach him hunting skills. The children side with father as they cannot eat carbo and remain hungry. However, disputes arise about who will do it first. Holly attempts to kill the creature but only wounds it. During this time, Mother finds debris from the Ark in the forest and enters a simulation chamber. Connecting, she travels back to the day when she discovered the last embryos that were destroyed due to Campion's actions. But later, it seemed as if the girls were responsible, not understanding what they were doing. Mother forgives him, and together they scatter the ashes of the unborn children over the pit. Meanwhile, Lucius reveals that the poems recited by the leader are a lullaby for soul known by all their children. The couple realizes that they are under suspicion, and that night when the stone stops radiating warmth and people start getting cold, Marcus confronts his holiness, declaring that he has lost faith. Marcus is ready to set off the explosives, but a voice in his head orders him not to. Marcus presses the leader against the sacred structure, causing him to burn alive. The stone immediately heats up again. In the android's shelter, Tempest, unable to bear hunger, kills the creature. Right after that, she discovers it was a pregnant female. During the night, an unknown person finds the children's beacons and takes them, leading Sue to conclude that Mother is moving the children. Marcus refuses to explain the voices that he heard and declares himself the leader. The military personnel support his candidacy, forcing the others to comply. He immediately announces a mission to retrieve the children. Meanwhile, the children are sampling the meat from the creature killed during the night, while father tells mother about a little human-like figure he was distracted by, one that resembled Tally. Meanwhile, the Mithras group finds a surviving section of the Ark's deck containing a functioning energy unit that could help them in their fight against the Necromancer. Later, Marcus witnesses several Mithras members beating a masked man responsible for violating the sleeping women. Since he survived the crash, he must be executed immediately. However, the leader prohibits it. During this time, the children spot a creature in the pit, eating lichen, and they collect it. Meanwhile, Mother explains the sanctity of motherhood to Tempest and then goes on a vigil. Suddenly, she sees Tally below and follows. The figure leads her to a place of computer simulation. There, Mother learns that she was a combat android of the Mithras, captured and reprogrammed by an atheist engineer named Campion. He intended to make her the mother of a new generation of atheist humans, infusing her with human emotions, including love. And the creation fell in love with its creator. One day Campion brought her a baby and she killed it, revealing her lack of maternal instincts. Fortunately, it was a baby android, and Campion was only testing her. When he understood that mother was fully ready, he placed her in a ship with father and 12 human embryos. He erased all memories of himself and kissed her farewell. From the simulation, mother extracts a message that the child is in danger. She rushes to the settlement and finds Tempest poisoned, attempting to kill herself and her fetus. Mother prevents her death, and the girl realizes that the android genuinely cares about her. Meanwhile, the Mithras group descends into the pit, but only finds the children's beacons. There, they encounter a strange humanoid creature and a makeshift map made of stones and sticks, indicating the creature's intelligence. In the meantime, Marcus hears the prayers of the condemned man, who confesses that he did everything under Saul's orders, who commanded him to reproduce. However, after his trial, he no longer heard the voice of the deity. In the morning, the Mithras group heads towards the android camp, using the cave-found map, and confirms confirms that all the children are alive and well. Once again, the mother recalls the kiss of her creator, for it was during that moment that she experienced a strange sensation while Marcus and his people observed the children.
Xiu is ready to take Paul away right now, but the leader is convinced that they must first destroy the mother, especially since she flies in the same direction every day. In the evening, Vita, the youngest of the Mithras children, confesses that Tally taught her how to make dolls, while the mother pressures Tempest to promise not to harm herself and the child. In the morning, Paul witnesses Campion burying the remains of the creature, convinced that souls exist in everything, even in plants. Paul argues against this, citing scripture, but who knew this, the one who wrote the book? Meanwhile, Hunter finds an empty tin can. At this time, Paul solves a puzzle faster than Campion, which enrages the boy. Holly discovers Hunter holding the found can and realizes that the Mithras followers are close, but she hopes that the androids won't be harmed. Meanwhile, Lucius questions Marcus about his father once again, and Marcus pretends to be aware of their friendship. The Mithras followers discover a simulator and realize that the mother arrives precisely here. By connecting, she becomes vulnerable. In the camp, Paul displays the trap he constructed, which invokes J jealousy and campion. He strikes his friend several times in anger. The mother is horrified by her son's actions, but he reminds her of those she has killed. Then she hears the mental call and flies to the simulator, where the Mithras followers await her. While the mother connects, Marcus assembles a team to destroy her, and some warriors led by Sue depart with the children. The android infiltrates the simulation and learns that someone has entered inside. And there she sees her creator. She is joyful and he admits to missing her greatly. Suddenly the android confesses that she desires unity with him. Intimacy occurs between the human and the android from which the mother ruptures with blinding light emanating from the energy device in the condemned's hands. She tries to fend it off with a scream but loses strength. Marcus orders the detonators activated, leading to an unprecedented tension in the earthly field. Stones rise into the air, falling upon the people. The mother ascends and destroys everything around with a scream. During this time, Sue sees Paul and receiving no response from Marcus decides to take the children away. Meanwhile, Vita tells Campion that she played with Tally. He does not believe her, but then he sees a small figurine himself. She reaches Paul and takes him with her. Their father senses danger and orders the children to get into the shuttle just as the military opened fire on it. The android destroys one of the Mithras followers using Paul's trap and kills several more people before continuing to search for Paul. He engages in a shootout with Lucius and just when it seems the android might have a chance to win, Hunter activates the communication system and directs the military to the android. They shoot him and he loses the ability to move. But then Mother appears and kills everyone except Lucius who escaped. Marcus finds Sue and Paul but realizes that without destroying the Mother they have no chance of survival. He learns that the android carries its eyes in a pouch around its neck and gives the boy a knife. Mother repairs father while Paul who has returned cuts off the pouch from her neck and tries to run away. Mother catches up to the boy but falls into Marcus's ambush who manages to severely damage the android. He is about to kill her when a voice in his head commands him to spare mother. The man takes the pouch with the eyes for himself. The Mithras followers take over the camp, lock Campion in a barn and incapacitate the injured mother. Marcus praises his son and then begins to reprogram father while Sue accuses him of using their son. She asks her husband to leave for the tropical zone and live peacefully, but she understands that he enjoys the worship of the Mithras followers. Later, Marcus confronts mother who deduces his true nature upon seeing the surgical scars. However, he reminds her that she was a necromancer and killed numerous people. He wants to know why she kept returning to the simulator, but mother remains silent. The children are once again given the medallions of soul, although not all of them want them. Lucius announces that Campion will be baptized, sparking a disagreement among the children. Tempest is angry at Holly for not warning the androids about the danger. Father, now just an android, serves the victors while Paul once again constructs the city of Bithra that he saw in his dreams. The priests are puzzled, perhaps they misinterpreted the prophecy. And the boy prophet isn't an orphan at all. Meanwhile, Tempest advises Campion to pretend that he's ready to accept Sol, and he once again sees his little sister Tally, who died many years ago. At the same time, the Mithras followers are constructing a temple, and Paul shows his mother a trap in which a creature was caught. She asks her son not to tell the others about the catch. 
Marcus attempts to reprogram Mother but without success, however the android realizes that Marcus was an orphan, a lost little boy in life. These words trigger a strange reaction in Marcus and he hears the voice again, promising that he will become the king of this world if he spares Mother. Impressed by this, Marcus pushes Paul away. Campion reluctantly agrees to the ritual but disrupts it upon seeing that the altar is made from tombstones of his sisters and brothers. Unable to reprogram Mother, Marcus decides to destroy her and orders Father to prepare the android for transport. She expresses joy at seeing Father but he does not recognize her. Meanwhile, Campion sees Tally again. She advises him to look out the window. The boy sees Mother bound and being transported towards the pit. Under the supervision of Marcus, Lucius catches up to them and Mother reveals Marcus's true nature, exposing the switch. However, Marcus attributes everything to the cunning of the android and leaves. Tempest watches the procession from a distance. At the pit, Marcus orders Mother to be thrown down, and Father pushes the sled, but in an unconscious movement he holds onto the rope. At that moment, Marcus sees a man emerging from the woods, challenging him to a fight. They engage in a knife fight until Mother manages to climb back up the rope. The opponent strikes Marcus and suddenly disappears, as if the leader fought with himself. Mother survives and Marcus realizes that the orphan from the Mithras prophecy is himself. He shares this information with Sue who offers her help, while Paul finds his pet mouse. In the morning Marcus feels better and assures Paul that he was injured because he didn't listen to Sol, while Hunter tries to eliminate Father's nervous tick acquired after reprogramming. He realizes that the phrase Sol is light is conveyed by the android through Morse code. Meanwhile, the wounded mother reaches the wreckage of the Ark, finds a medical robot, an android, connects to it, and complains about the pain in her abdomen. Meanwhile, Sue talks to Paul who is unhappy about Campion being locked up and eagerly supports his mother's suggestion to leave this place without their father. Meanwhile, mother's abdominal pain persists. She performs a surgery under the guidance of a doctor and discovers a strange mass inside her that she cannot remove due to her caretaking program stopping her. The doctor believes she needs a blood transfusion. At the same time, Paul brings another portion of food to Campion, but father catches him and tells him to stay away from the boy. Later, Sue expresses to her husband that he seems to be truly becoming a faithful and she does not like it. Meanwhile, Tempest finds bloody traces of mother and follows them. Paul brings food to Campion again, infuriating Marcus who suspects Sue and Paul of planning to abandon him. Sue rushes to her son but Marcus locks his wife in a stone barn and calls upon everyone to pray for her lost soul. Campion constantly hears Tally's voice and digs a tunnel for escape. Paul gives him an earpiece through which he explains the escape plan. During this time, Mother discovers the mutilated bodies of Android and transfuses their blood into herself. The doctor is astonished by her empathetic abilities. In the evening, Campion manages to get outside and sees Marcus praying in the temple, after which the temple catches fire. The Mithras followers gather around the fire and Campion runs away from the camp. Meanwhile, Paul sneaks up to his mother's cell where Holly and Vita are waiting for him, asking him to take them with him. Sue leads the children to the shuttle. During this time, the doctor informs mother that she was created according to the scrolls provided by the Mithras followers of Sol, so they themselves didn't fully understand her technology. Suddenly, a creature attacks mother. She kills it and then, licking the knife, realizes that she needs the blood of a living being. Campion hides from father who was sent to capture him. They come face to face and the boy hopes that father has regained control but he throws an axe at the boy and misses. Sue realizes that the shuttle is malfunctioning, they flee from the camp with the children. And finally Tempest finds mother but mother notices a cut on the girl's hand and beckons her over. Campion catches up with the group of fugitives while mother enters a simulation. She tries to understand what's happening to her and the projection of her creator informs her that within her is growing the one who will truly become the future of humanity, while Campion and the other children were only a rehearsal. Upset, Tempest wanders among the wreckage and encounters a cursed animal. She tries to kill the assailant, but her mother intervenes, needing the blood. She activates a guardian android whose head is in the backpack of the criminal. If the android is moved, the criminal's head will explode, but he is necessary for mother to nourish her offspring. Influenced by the voices, Marcus becomes agitated and cuts off father's finger which was tapping out Morse code. 
Hunter realizes that father can be restored to his former state but needs a password, and then he recalls the phrase that father kept tapping and inputs it into the android system. Father offers to tell a joke. It becomes clear that he's back to normal. Father asks Hunter to keep up appearances and to join Marcus's search expedition. The shuttle flies towards the temple while Sue and the children head to the gorge where mother is hiding. Marcus asks Sol to guide him and the fugitives discover bloody traces and follow them. It turns out that Mother is leading those traces. Together with Tempest and the connected criminal android, she is searching for a safe place to give birth. They reach the gorge where metallic tarot cards are scattered along the walls by an unknown hand. And at this spot, Sue and the children arrive. Campion rushes to Mother. Sue is ready to kill the android, but she refrains upon learning that the children are willing to protect her, and that Mother is pregnant, even though nobody understands how this is possible. Mother feels unwell, and Sue tries to help her. During this time, people begin to protest Marcus's behavior. He forces Hunter to reveal the location where the fugitives might have gone. He pushes the boy towards the temple, but unlike the former leader, Hunter does not combust, which the others consider to be Soul's grace. Meanwhile, Mother tells Sue that she knows her secret, and Sue asks her not to expose it because the boy wouldn't be able to handle it. At the same moment, Father and Hunter depart on the shuttle, leaving the Mithras followers behind at the temple. Night falls, and Mother scans the metallic cards, witnessing a strange scene with a dodecahedron and an incomprehensible creature inside. She becomes ill and returns to the cave. It seems the blood flow is redirected, and her strength diminishes in the criminal. Father detects this energy flow and guides the shuttle to the right location when the priest criminal attempts to assault Tempest again. However, Holly snatches the head of the guard from his backpack and throws it away, causing the criminal's head to explode. Escaping from the Mithras followers, Father and Hunter reunite with the children and mother. The android is surprised by the appearance of the child but is ready to find the blood she needs. While Sue donates her blood, explaining that she cannot have children and that's why she became attached to Paul, the boy hears an unfamiliar voice. Going outside, he finds cards, which he throws into the fire, praising Sol. Upon returning, he tells Campion that Sol plays the child and mother. At this time, Lucius starts asking questions about his father, and the surviving Mithras followers finally realize that Marcus is not who he claims to be. They attack him, beat him, and leave him in a desert. In the morning, Marcus regains consciousness, but visions continue to visit him. And then he sees the shuttle and heads in the direction of its flight. Mother's belly keeps growing and the group sets out to find a place for the birth. Soon they stop near the pit in the forest, but according to Mother, this is the very place where she was drawn to. They settle in a small cave. Campion hopes that the child will possess Mother's abilities and she reassures the jailer's boy. Xiu conducts tests and is surprised by the results, while Hunter talks about Soul's temple. Holly still believes in the Almighty, while Tempest denies it. During this time, Paul discovers a hole with paintings on the wall depicting humans and large snakes, and immediately he hears voices again. Meanwhile, Father expresses her feelings to Mother. He is hurt and does not understand how she could become pregnant. Mother reveals their common creator, Campion, who placed an embryo inside her. Father becomes furious upon learning about his words regarding their children being a rehearsal and refuses to care for the new child. During this time, Marcus roams in the grip of his visions, convincing him that he is the sole prophet of soul and will become the king of the world. And suddenly, Paul gives the mouse to Campion and heads to the shuttle. Xiu catches up with him and takes the navigator he removed from the shuttle, without which the ship cannot fly. The boy protests against flying to the tropics because danger awaits mother's child there, as Sol, whom he hears, warned him. She tries to convince him that the Almighty doesn't exist. Meanwhile, Mother senses a call and goes to the pit when an unknown creature attacks her. Father rushes to help, but Mother has already dealt with it. While examining the dead creature, they find the skull in its bag, identifying it as a Neanderthal skull. They realize that humans lived on this planet, but their evolution took a different path. They degraded and turned into the beings the heroes previously fought against. They bury the body, and Father confesses that he wants to erase memories of their past life, because he feels resentment over betrayal by Mother. She receives a signal from the tester, indicating that the birth must happen right now. However, Mother is not present, and on top of that, Paul reveals to everyone that Saul told them the truth about Sue. She is not his real mother, and he wounds her with a shot to the stomach. The children take the pistol and try to help her. In the meantime, Mother finds a cave containing the skulls of unknown creatures she saw in her visions. 
Through her mouth, she gives birth to a gigantic larva with endless teeth, which transforms into a serpent that attaches itself to her flesh and grows rapidly. She hides from the children to prevent them from seeing the horrific creature, but father finds her. Mother explains that the creator did not give her the child. Once it grows, it will become dangerous. Therefore, she plans to take it down the pit in the shuttle so it can't return. But father insists on accompanying her. The two of them enter the shuttle and Campion runs after them, witnessing the shuttle flying directly into the pit and plunging into the blazing core of the planet. The androids embrace, reminiscing about their children, confident that Campion will lead a new tribe. Then in the forest, Marcus encounters unfamiliar men. He shoots them with their own weapons, not believing that the voices in his head were echoes of the communication that these people had with their spaceship passing overhead. Meanwhile, the android ship, somehow surviving the journey through the planet's molten core, emerges on the other side. Father, seeing the unharmed serpent, opens the door, and he and mother leap out, while the serpent breaks free, now of giant proportions. And with this, the first season concludes.